Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Arjawi. The representatives of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the kingdom's achievements, especially in the field of equestrian sports abroad, reflect the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He expressed joy over the victory of I Be Rich Like Me, which carried the victorious slogan in the first lap of the Beni Yas race patronized by the Dubai police. He said that the victory affirms the kingdom's abilities in the sport. He praised the jockey's efforts in realizing this achievement and wished all involved in the sport in the kingdom further success. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, has stressed that Bahraini women have achieved great strides which entitle them to hold leading local and international positions. She paid tribute to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, hailing the role, far-sighted vision, supported by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She underlined the pivotal role of the Supreme Council for Women, chaired by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King, in chartering strategies, spearheading initiatives and projects, and promoting active partnership with state institutions to integrate women's needs in the government action plan. The speaker highlighted Bahrain's tangible progress in promoting equal opportunities, justice and gender balance, stressing the successful transition from women's empowerment to that of advancement. She made the statement as she met Munaza Hassan, Secretary General of the Women's Parliamentary Caucus, a cross-party forum of women parliamentarians in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. The speaker underlined the role of the reform project led by His Majesty the King in promoting the status of women and engaging them as essential partners in national development. WPC Secretary General said that the strides achieved by the Bahraini women have become a role model looking forward to developing cooperation with the Council of Representatives and the Supreme Council for Women. Zainal and the parliamentary delegation toured the WPC and viewed a photo expo showcasing key Pakistani political and parliamentary personalities. Uh, we gave a presentation to the Honorable Speaker uh, about the working of the Council and the formation of the Council and the activities and things that under the uh, uh, under caucus what, uh, what are being done and what uh, activities we have uh, done in last three years and what uh, bills that we've moved, what house business we've done through caucus and how we have facilitated women parliamentarians, uh, our women parliamentarians through caucus. We have asked her that we should have uh, um, bilateral talks. Uh, uh, we need more time for different subjects uh, on which we can have bilateral talks like climate change, like women and child issues, like tourism, like women uh, and handicrafts uh, export that uh, we would like to make from Pakistan because we have a big textile industry and I'm sure people and women uh, in general would appreciate Pakistani uh, material, uh, clothes, and uh, uh, we should uh, do more um, uh, exports uh, uh, facilities we should have for uh, uh, Pakistani industry for, uh, uh, for Bahrain. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azayani, met with Iraq's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Fuad Mohammed Hussein, on the occasion of his participation in the 17th IISS Manama Dialogue. They discussed the existing relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Iraq and ways to enhance the framework of bilateral cooperation and coordination in various fields to serve the common interests of both countries and people. In addition to reviewing the latest developments on the regional and international arenas. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Libyan Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Najla al Mangush. They discussed the relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the state of Libya and the development they are witnessing to enhance the bilateral cooperation and joint coordination and both countries' aspirations to develop these relations to broader levels. To achieve the common interests, they also discussed the latest developments on the Libyan arena and the efforts being made to achieve security and stability. 
The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman bin Tawfiq al muayyad held a meeting remotely with his Egyptian counterpart, Dr. Ashraf Subhi. The minister underlined the strong bilateral relations and steadily growing cooperation led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President Abdel Fattah Sisi. He highlighted Bahrain's strategic programs and initiatives in support of the sectors of youth and sports to hone the skills and tap into competencies. Dr. Subhi also lauded the fraternal relations bonding the two countries, noting the common interest and joint cooperation and coordination across all fields. The Information and E-Government Authority and the Saudi Data and Artificial Intelligence Authority signed a Memorandum of Understanding to activate the health passport and achieve integration between the Be Aware Bahrain application and the Saudi Tawakkalna application. This is meant to facilitate the movement of passengers, whether they are citizens or residents between the two countries, through the King Fahad Causeway and verify their commitment to health conditions adopted as part of the two kingdoms' efforts in combating the coronavirus pandemic. This cooperation between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain aims at ensuring the application of preventative and monitoring procedures. The Memorandum of Understanding was signed in Riyadh by the Chief Executive Officer of Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed Al-Qaid, and the President of the Saudi Data and Artificial Intelligence Authority, Dr. Abdullah Al-Ghamdi, and the presence of officials from both countries. And to speak more about this important MOU, we're glad to host with us the Deputy CEO of Electronic Transformation in IGA, Dr. Zakaria Ahmed Al Khaja. Good evening, Dr. Zakaria. Good evening, hi. Dr. Zakaria, we would like to start with the reason behind signing this important MOU. Well, thank you very much for having me today with you. And in fact, uh, the MOU. Uh, it is driven uh, basically from the uh, historical and long-lasting relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, it it, it, it uh, reflects a strong extension of, of the mutual cooperation between uh, the two kingdoms. Basically, the MOU uh, is really very important for both uh, citizens and residents that support the efforts of National Task Force for the, for the contact in COVID-19 which is led by His Royal Highness Prime Minister Colonel Brent, as well as comes in line with the direction of His Excellency, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Minister of Interior, and taking all necessary steps that ensure the health and safety while traveling between both countries. Dr. Zakaria, the benefits of signing the MOU to link the Be Aware app in Bahrain and the Tawakkalna in Saudi app. How does that reflect on the passengers from both countries commuting? Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, you, you know, and everyone knows that Be Aware and Tawakkalna application has become a key platform for any citizen or resident in, in, in two countries, respectively, during the pandemic. In addition to that, the number of travelers among these two countries is considerably very high. Therefore, this initiative uh, will have uh, several uh, benefits, such as uh, eliminating the paperwork and PCR documents required to cross the border, which will ensure easy traveling for citizens and residents. Uh, also, it's streamlining the checkpoint procedure but will eventually accelerate the time frame of the journey. One more benefit as well is provi it provides accurate database about the safety of travel. Uh, last and not least, uh, supporting uh, the national economy uh, of, of the both countries. So, I mean, uh, in conclusion, this is very, very important, I'm all you, uh, it will really uh, it drives to have very easy and straightforward without any kind of complication uh, while traveling or crossing the borders between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. And this will make really the, 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 the traveling experience uh, much more easier and more efficient in the future. Dr. Zakaria, thank you for your time with us and for this very important MOU signing between the two countries. Thank you. 
The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that more than 1,185,000 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while more than 1,151,000 had taken the second dose and at least 508,000 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases has dropped to 213 with 16 recoveries, 22 registered new cases and no deaths. Six of the new registered cases are expatriates, 11 are contacts of active cases and five are travel related. The ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.